the other side of the coin, which is the people who don't like us, they say, you guys spread Islam by the sword. And that's the other extreme. So, in the next what, 20 minutes, inshallah, we'll kind of give you the middle. What is the truth of the matter? Was Islam spread by the sword? It's the case about the time of the Prophet ﷺ. There is simply no denying that the Khulafa al-Rashidun and the Umayyads engaged in offensive conquests of other lands. The Sassanid Empire did not pose any immediate threat. They were in position today and next time as well. And the Romans as well couldn't care less about the Arabs. Remember we said this from the very beginning. Both the Romans and the Persians, or I should say the uh, Byzantine Empire and the Sassanid Empire, that's the more precise term, they were minding their own business, fighting each other. Well, the fact of the matter is that in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, we can say without being apologetic at all, that pretty much most of the battles were battles that were defensive in nature. That's very clear. You don't, I mean, you don't have to be an apologetic at all. Look at the situation. Who was persecuting whom? Who kicked whom out of their lands? Who was the one? So it's very clear that Badr and Uhud and Ahzab were very necessary. And he's denying that the early Muslims wanted political conquest. Now, is that problematic? Should we try to explain it away? All we need to do is contextualize. All we need to do is contextualize. Contextualize. Firstly, everyone did it, without exception. Every superpower at the time was attacking every other power. That's how those powers survived. It was the law of the time. This was a time frame where everybody is attacking everybody. It's a fact of life. Why should the Muslims be any different? As well, there's no denying that of the goals of early Islam was indeed to spread the political power of Islam. In fact, is not that the goal of every civilization? Why were the Romans fighting everybody else? Why did Alexander, why did Alexander in ancient times go and conquer everybody else? That's how civilizations flourished. There's many of which are unethical. The IMF, for example. Right? The superpowers of our times, they use the International Monetary Fund, for example. Or they'll use the United Nations. But in essence, in essence, each country and civilization strives to get the most power for itself, including the one we're living, especially the one we're living in. This is a fact of life that is a historically undeniable. So why should we sugarcoat for our own? In our times, by the way, perhaps it is true that the major superpowers technically don't want to, or I shouldn't put it that way, they technically give the impression they're not invading other lands and countries without provocation. But, okay, suppose, ignore all of the military conflict. Doesn't every nation in our time strive its best to get the most political clout and economic clout and military might than other nations? This is what nations do.